a very warm welcome to you. In the background is my opening thing for my television series. This, what I'm going to present to you now, is part of my fourth TV series broadcast in South Africa and subsequently in several other countries as well. I don't know if what I'm going to show you now has ever been on YouTube. I can't find it on my channel. But it was an expedition I took in 2012. It was, it was the fourth, my fourth television series. I was driving a Volkswagen Amarok, which I was also reviewing at the time. And we traveled through some of the most glorious parts of Namibia, the most photogenic country in the world, in my opinion and uh, visited Itosha and, and saw the huge elephants. They are really unbelievably big elephants of the Itosha National Park. And we concluded our trip that I did actually with my brother-in-law, Tom. And this was 2012, if I haven't mentioned that already. And we ended it at a place that Gwyn and I actually spent our honeymoon. So I'm actually going to stop the video there because April, uh, May 2024, Gwyn and I will be, we plan to revisit that area in Lupala, in part, again part of the Caprivi area of Namibia this year. So I'm going to avoid any spoilers by ending this show there. And you want to find out more about Lupala and our adventures there, you'll have to watch what Gwyn and I produce in April, May 24. Enjoy the show. Welcome to this edition of Four Wheel Drive. You find me in Namibia, one of my, certainly one of my favorite countries. Why? Because, well, look at it. I mean, surely this is the most photogenic country probably in the entire world. It is just every time I come here, I'm just blown away. This time, my trip is a little bit different. I'm here for two reasons. A, to test the Volkswagen Amarok pickup and to visit a place in Namibia that I haven't been to in many, many years. Itosha, and m for me personally, most excitedly, Caprivi. I honeymooned in the Caprivi. Yes, I went on a camping trip for my honeymoon. I'll show you a few clips. Don't worry, it's not your average home movie, so you can relax. I'm back to Caprivi to find that very spot. This time though, I've been promised some luxury. It's 2024, that means 40 years that I've been exploring the world's most remote places in four-wheel drives, in association with the Overland Workshop. It's early morning at Okokweo Rest Camp, on the far western side of the great Itosha Pan. Itosha is Namibia's equivalent of um, Hawangi in Zimbabwe and Kruger in South Africa well organized, well run. It's a kind of reserve where you're not really allowed out of your car except at designated spots. And we've been, we had enjoyed a lovely meal last night. We've been living in nice accommodation. They have lovely chalets. And Okokweo has this water hole right next to the accommodation. Now, last night I saw something absolutely unbelievably beautiful. I've started a project working with Rhinos Day to save the rhinos. I want to see South Africans all driving with their, these red noses on the front of their vehicles because we've got to do something about the rhino poaching. As it so happens, can you imagine five Labrador puppies fighting over a tennis ball and running around and giggling like puppies do? Can you imagine rhinos doing that? I, I couldn't until last night. They were here. There were five black rhinos 
playing like little puppies for about three hours. It was the most beautiful thing to watch. My children have been lucky enough to see a rhino, one that's actually walking. I doubt if my grandchildren will ever see that because these beautiful creatures are being wiped off the face of the earth. Now stop talking about it, stop yabbering on. We need to do something. My campaign right now is to see every single four-wheel drive in Southern Africa wearing a red nose. We, we've got to do something because they're being, dis, they're being slaughtered. They will be only be seen in textbooks. And within my lifetime that could happen and it's a very, very real threat. So please join me now on my journey as I head east across Etosha into the Caprivi. And join me please. We need to save the rhinos. Okokoyo is on the western portion of the Great Pan within the Itosha National Park. The water hole at the edge of the camp means that the game comes to you. We stayed just one night and from the camp and its immediate surroundings we saw zebra, wildebeest, jackal, springbok, chemsbok, ostrich, lion and of course rhino and this list does not include the animals I didn't photograph. Itasha measures 22,912 square kilometers, making it one of the largest national parks in Africa with the Atosha Pan itself covering 4,730 square kilometers, about 21% of the park area. Proclaimed in 1907, it officially became a national park in 1963. We're on a road now that actually cuts across the surface of Atosha Pan, well marked out, so you can't accidentally leave the road and get bogged down in what is undoubtedly thick, soggy, black mud under this white crust that surrounds us. I'm just hoping again that I can, at the end of this road, get out and walk around. I see some people have taken their vehicles and done donuts, uh, which is uh, just one of those things that you just have to do if you get onto a large flat surface that you will. Anyway, we'll see. Right. Must take survival equipment. A hat. It's very hot. Must be a good 38, 40 degrees. Itosha is very similar to Saupan, but the surface here is softer. There doesn't seem to be that very firm crust through which if you break through it, the vehicle sinks. This, I don't believe, uh, is as treacherous to drive on. Just my guess. But you know what? If you suffer from agoraphobia, that's the fear of wide open spaces, this is the place to come for treatment. Itosha Pan is the second largest open pan in southern Africa. Sawapan Botswana is, is larger. But the wildlife and game surrounding Sawapan can't compare with the Tosha and it makes the Tosha very very special but of course for me right now I'm actually not allowed to be here I'm not allowed to be standing outside here it actually has a sign there that stay in your car I can't think of a good reason why one should stay in one's car there are no animals in this particular place but I suppose I understand it with lots and lots of foreign tourists who have absolutely no understanding and think this is just a great big zoo I can perhaps maybe understand why they have to do it. I just find it a bit frustrating. I mean, coming to a place like this and staying in your car? 
I'll stay for three minutes and leave. Elephant in Atosha are amongst the tallest in Africa, where adult male shoulder heights range from 3.5 to 4.2 meters, a good half meter more than elephants from the eastern part of southern Africa. Now this is very, very exciting. We have traveled the length of uh, Etosha Pan from west to east and we have been via Namatoni. Now Namatoni of course is the most well known of all of the camps. Now we've been taken, I'm following one of the local park vehicles to a place called Onkoshi. Now Onkoshi is a very private camp. I have no idea what to expect. Normally you're taken there by their vehicles, you actually leave your vehicles in Namatoni. We've allowed, been allowed to take our vehicle there because of all the camera equipment and everything. But it's so spare, it's so mm, there that you can't drive there yourself. You have to go there by special invitation. Well, if you had said to me, what would you be your ideal camp? I would say I'd want to stay at the side, the edge of a salt pan. And I'm a bit odd that way. That's what this is. Right, what is this? Uh, this is grape tiger. Grape just tiger. To, yeah, just to clear the trail. Oh, that was a, that's a very good idea. <laughs> uh, Tom, yeah. you can put down the camera and have a grape tiger. <laughs> do you get a lot of game around the camp? Yes, we do get uh, lots of them, as you can see on the pen. At the edge of the pen, you can see some traits of the animals. Oh, okay. It's just that at the moment, because the pen is dry, yes. they have moved more close to the water holes oh, where they can okay. get a fresh drink of water. Okay. Okay. Paradise. I must say, this lodge is not typical in Namibia in that it is very high tariff. There are many high tariff lodges here, but most are more reasonably priced than this one. But what is typical about it are the people that run it and the people that serve you. Exceptionally friendly, sometimes actually over the top, which I love, and efficient. It's just well run. Hey, what do you think? Definitely. I'm not used to this kind of pampering on my trips, but I suppose I can live with it for a while. body temperature when it gets to a certain point above normal you need one of these this is the dry season November the best time to actually visit Itosha is when it's full of water now the water doesn't arrive here every year it comes from the Kanini the river that divides uh, Namibia with Angola and when the Kanini is in flood after a good flood, this area fills up with water. And in fact, where I'm standing now would be about a meter underwater. The amazing thing about it is that, I wish I could film it, but wrong time of year. This place comes alive with fish. Now, many of the fish come through the flood, but many of the fish don't. They are actually alive underneath this crusty surface right now, because after the flood arrives in after a very short time all the birds arrive and they feed on fish that's an amazing thing
You've probably noticed over the last few days I've been traveling with somebody. I'd like to introduce him to you now, Tom Roberts. He's my brother-in-law. I don't call him Tom very often. I call him mad and insane more often than not. And that is because Tom, it, well, whatever you want to call him, is riding a bicycle from Cape Agullis, the southernmost point in South Africa, to John O'Groats, the northernmost point in Scotland. And yes, you heard right, a bicycle. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Go for it. <laughs> really, you really need to find some other way of handling your midlife crisis. I because think I need to sit here to handle it. I think this would do it. It's just before sunup at uh, Camp Nkoshi. A level of tranquility and peace is beyond description. I really just don't have the superlatives to suit the occasion. Utter, utter silence. Well, it's morning <clears throat> and we are now at Papa Falls Rest Camp. Papa Falls Rest Camp, how do I best describe it? Uh, it's nice. Went to see the falls last night and they're um, nice. It's a nice place. To be honest, I'm being a little bit unfair. It's mainly because it's such a letdown from Koshi last, you know, the t previous two nights. It's you know, which was absolutely sublime in every respect. Uh, I can't really give this very high marks. And arriving here, we'd actually thought we actually thought we'd arrived at the wrong place because uh, it was so different from all the other NWR lodges that are so. I mean, the ones that we've been to are, are really really well done, the reception is fantastic, you know, and this is actually a bit bit run down. Maybe it's those one of the older ones that they haven't got to yet to revamp. Uh, but it's unfortunately not uh, the campsite and the, the chalets are not on the water's edge. They are a bit of a walk from the actual falls themselves. But it's, uh, you know, I wouldn't, st I, I wouldn't come here for a long stay. I came here as an overnight. Try and get here at about two or three in the afternoon. Spend the you know, late part of the afternoon uh, at the at the rapids, um, and then just enjoy tranquil. One thing I will say though, if you're a birder, this is a good place to spend a couple of days. The birds are brilliant. Well, this is the campsite at Papa Falls, and I think it's nice. It's actually very nice. I actually think, I actually prefer it to the bungalows. This is a very, very nice campsite. The walk to the rapids from the camping site is short, but not wheelchair friendly. Well, this is it. Papa Falls. In my opinion, it shouldn't be called Papa Falls, it should be called Papa Rapids. Nevertheless, it's, uh, it's nice, eh? Yeah, very nice. Time for a little fishing and a nice refreshing swim in the Okavango River. And whatever else comes to mind. Uh, guess what I'm doing now? <laughs> what a little... I'll do a little narration thing. Guess what I'm doing? <laughs> next stop is an overnight stay at Katima Melilo. Here we make camp next to the Zambezi River. Well, we've just enjoyed a lovely afternoon's fishing on the Zambezi. So what we're going to eat tonight is freeze-dried chicken a la king. As you know, I like equipment that is simple, quick, easy, and it just works. Introducing my new favorite toy. This is a MSR, I keep on forgetting its name. It's a volcano or tornado or something like that. But anyway, works like a volcano. It's for boiling water. Now, it boils water unbelievably quickly. 
You will not believe it. Now, I'm combining it with another quick and easy. This is a backcountry chicken a la king. I boil the right amount of water, which will take about one minute. I then pour it with this in this pot. Seal it 10 minutes later, and it really tastes good. So 11 minutes time, I've gotten a, a, a fantastic meal. And that's all I've had to do. Ten minutes. Ta-da! Right, early morning on the Zambezi River. Very, very pleasant, very quiet night. Did some fishing yesterday afternoon and ate chicken for dinner. Uh, I don't need to say any more than that. Uh, one bit of advice though, Katima. It's a good place for a stopover, um, but don't stay near the town. There are a couple of campsites quite close to the town. Very noisy, busy, not very nice. Head east, 10-15 minute drive. This is a typical one, this is called Island View uh, campsite. Lovely, quiet, really, really lovely. Lots of birds, and this is where we stayed last night. And uh, now we're heading actually briefly into Botswana to catch our houseboat at Kasani. The Ichobizi houseboat can be boarded from Caprivi or Botswana. Either way, to get on board is via the houseboat shuttle service. Right. Hello, hello. Hello. This is exciting and it's new for me. I've never done this before. It's fantastic. I've never done this kind of travel before. I've never really thought about it. You know, I've done it in, the, in, in America. I went in the houseboat up and, up and down the canals and, and it was wonderful. But I've never done it in an African river. This is something special. We are sharing our accommodation, I should say boat, with an American family out from Colorado. Notwithstanding my camera equipment scattered over the bed, this is the double room. A fan for cooling. You don't need an air conditioning. As hot as it is, lovely cool breeze over the deck. 220 volts for charging batteries. Uh, really comfortable. I mean, this is this is as good as uh, as good as a lodge. But it's moving. You let me down. Colin, you gotta come look at this. Come here. Oh my goodness, they're huge. Look at them. Isn't that incredible? And they're babies. <gasps> Ow, Nolan. They're babies. Baby hippos. Baby hippos. Just like you. Hey guys, keep our voices down. Machine guys coming to kill you. Scared of us. Oh, and you scared them. There has been an upsurgence over the last 10 15 years of cruise travel around the world. Instead of people spending their holidays on, in hotels and cities, they go aboard big cruise ships and visit many cities from the luxury and comfort of a moving hotel. What's that got to do with Itchelbezi? which is the name of this boat. Imagine doing that in Africa. You're on a boat. You're moving about. You're not static. Going on a game drive, you, you don't need to go on a game drive. You see the game from your hotel room. To me, the argument has now ended. The best way to watch game is from a houseboat like this. Fantastic! This is the equivalent of your Land Rover six-seater game vehicle, except it's a boat. Same concept, but very different and much nicer. This is Elephant Bay. Itchobezi is now moored for the night 
and guests can get on their little motorboats and go out for a game drive or game motor or whatever you want to call it. This is Elephant Bay because obviously it's a favorite of elephants. No elephants right now, but you can see it is a favorite of elephants because the floodplain is littered with elephant prints. This guy, Barbel, is probably, I don't want to put my hands in his mouth, because I'll get nailed, it's probably in the region of 12, 13 pounds, I'd say, if not more. Fantastic. I had set up my vehicle, I'd opened a couple of doors, I'd had something to eat, it was completely dark, pulled out a little table, opened my laptop, and the next thing this lion roared. <laughs> and he was there. He was as far as that railing away. He was just the other side of the car. Both the car doors were open. Oh my God. After and a I wonderful just, breakfast, was, you know, sadly it's, it's time to say goodbye to the Ichobizi. Of all the places that I've been to in the many, many years I've been making these films, I cannot remember a time when I am more disappointed to leave the accommodation that I've enjoyed for the night. The Ichobizi houseboat is exceptional. Not cheap, but the experience, I will remember it forever. And one of the reasons why I'll remember it forever is this. Right, next stop, Ichingo River Lodge, Chobe River Lodge. This lodge actually supports the uh, houseboat we've just come off of, and the lodge is here mainly for fishing, which means that Tom is in his element, of course. He's already caught one, and I haven't, so I'm out again to try and catch up with him. Fat chance. Tom is an avid fisherman. No, let me put it this way, an expert fisherman, and he embarrasses me every time we go fishing. And here's why. Typical. <laughs> okay, hold it, and then we'll be... Well done, Tom. Uh, I intend to uphold Andrew White tradition of having a fantastic day's fishing and not eating fish in the evening. But I have to say this, it was a fantastically exciting day. We hooked many tigers and didn't, well, I didn't land any, Tom landed. What you see behind me is Lenyanti, and this is uncharacteristic of Namibia because Namibia is, is, is dry, it's yellow and orange, and here's Namibia and it's green, and it's green even now in the dry season. Everything's green. Of course, it's the furthermost eastern point, and it's an area where the ground, the earth is wet, wetlands, rivers everywhere, marshes everywhere. Very, very different from the rest of the country. Now, we're doing two things here. Lenyanti, we're in the northern part, we're going to go exploring the river, and as you can probably hear in the background and see from the foreground here, I'm not in the wild, I'm actually at Mazambala Lodge. This is one of the lodges that serves the Lenyanti. To be absolutely honest, having enjoyed all of the luxury for over a week now, uh, I'm tired of it. We've been away from the car for three days and that's been stressful because we've still got a lot of stuff in the car and it's a lack of independence that's 
and bugging me a bit. And thank you for the luxury. I loved it. But personally, I couldn't do a long holiday like this. I like to get into the rough and go exploring. And that's what we're doing tomorrow. This is the Kwando River. It meets up with the Lenyanti River and eventually meets up with the Chobe River. Part of the Caprivia I've not been to in 22 years. It's a mini delta. Yes, you get everything here, animals, and it's the best, it's phenomenal. Bird life, the, the elephants, this year we've got, we had about 1,000, 1,200 at some days. Well, this morning I've actually decided not to go fishing, it's just to stand in the water and enjoy the place. It is like a miniature Okavango. Easy to get to, no, no doubt cheaper to, to be here, and so similar in so many ways. It's wonderful. This place is very special to me. 22 years ago, almost to the day, I spent my honeymoon here. Gun and I loved camping so much that even our honeymoon, yes, we went camping. And I've returned to bask in some very pleasant memories. Arrived at this river, this is the Kwando River. And well, this is our final evening. Well, Officially our final evening. From tomorrow we actually head back south, back home. On the way we'll have another bush camp but like this one. It's been a, a brilliant, brilliant trip.